Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to review the Ishin ROTG02 FPV OTG receiver. This device is going to enable you to convert almost any Android, Mac and PC devices into FPV screens and will enable you to share your FPV experience and also to record your videos. I've extensively reviewed the Ishin ROTG01 in other videos and in this video I'm going to show you how to configure it on your Android, Mac and PC devices and also in the next video I'm going to take these two devices outdoors and see how they perform to check if the new diversity feature really adds up any value. In case you are wondering, this device is not compatible with iOS devices, so if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you will have to get either the Ishin R051 or the G model which I have reviewed before. The contents of the box is almost identical to the ROTG01, we get in the OTG receiver, two RPSMA antennas, a micro USB to micro USB connector and you also get in a micro USB to USB type C which is a nice add-on because it's going to allow you to connect it directly to a device with a USB type C without having the need to buy an extra adapter. The ROTG02 is slightly bigger than the ROTG01. It weighs 26.32 grams, so it's a little bit heavier than the ROTG01, which weighs 18.7 grams. On the front of the device we can find two buttons instead of just one like the ROTG01. Now we have two of them, so one button will go up on the frequencies and the other one will go down and if you press one of them it's going to perform a search. I'm going to show you how it works later in this video. On the bottom we can find micro USB connectors and the same connector that was used on the ROTG01 that will allow you to output your video externally. So the left pin is audio, then video, then 5 volts and then ground. On other tasks that I've done with the ROTG01 it didn't support audio so maybe it's not the case with the ROTG02. So later in this video I'm going to find out if audio is supported or not. And finally on the top we can find two RP-SMA connectors, so if you have SMA antennas, you will need to buy an adapter in order to connect them to the ROTG02. So this is how the receiver looks without its casing. You can see that we have two receivers, so this is true diversity and not dual antenna. We can see that over here we have just one receiver, over here it's connected to two of them. So I'm really glad to see that it's not just a dual antenna model. Now I'm going to show you how to connect the ROTG02 to my Android device. I've tested it with most Galaxy phones and I didn't have any issues but you will have to first check if your device supports UVC drivers, if not you might need to root your phone in order to enable them. So first download the GoFPV app, this is the app that I've been using and I'm quite happy with it. So open the app after installing it of course and then connect the ROTG02 using the appropriate connector. I'm using the micro USB to USB type C but if you're using the micro USB to micro USB I recommend to check the other end if it doesn't work for you because sometimes you have to switch the ends and if everything goes well after connecting it to your phone the RTG02 is going to boot up you're gonna see here the Ishin logo the right indicator indicates the signal strength of the right antenna the left one belongs to the left antenna and on the center you can see the frequency that you are currently on in order to change the frequencies you can just press one of these buttons, pressing the right one is going to increase the frequency and the left one is going to decrease it. And now I'm going to connect my TXO5 all-in-one camera. It's already set on F7 so you can see right now we are getting the picture but I'm going to show you how to perform a scan. It's done by just pressing one of the buttons and you can see that now it starts scanning the bands it covers 150 channels, so it covers pretty much all the available channels on the 5.8 GHz band. After it found the best signals, it just locks itself into it, and now we are ready to go. You can see, by the way, that if I'm going to connect the right antenna, it's going to increase the signal strength to 100%. So you can see the signal strength indicator is working. And it's one of the advantages of having a diversity receiver because you can just connect two types of antennas and then this receiver is going to select the best signal. The right button is the settings button which will allow us to set the app. You can either auto start the video which means whenever the OTG device is going to be connected it's going to start the app. You can set maximum screen brightness by default. You can close on camera disconnect which means if you're going to disconnect the OTG device the app is going to close itself. You can enable VR goggles mode and also change the size of the image. 
and you can also auto start video recording by pressing this button and then whenever the OTT device is going to be connected it's going to start recording the video to your device automatically finally you have also an option to record audio it's only available on Android devices so if you want to record audio on Mac or PC it's not going to be available so if your VTX supports audio transmission just check this button and now it's going to be saved on your device pressing this button is going to enable VR mode so if you want to use VR goggles in order to experience a more realistic FPV experience just press it and then you can also set the picture size by pressing these buttons over here because of the latency of this device which is rated to be around 100 milliseconds flying FPV racers is not ideal but if you want to use it for RC planes it's going to be more than enough recording the video is done by pressing this button over here once it turns red it means that now it's recording and if you press it again the recording procedure will be stopped and it's going to be saved to the gallery of your Android device now you can see that the GoFPV app just crashed and these things happen sometimes and it's one of the reasons that this device should be mainly used to share the FPV experience and not as your main flying device because if it crashes you might crash your quadcopter or your RC plane and that's not good so it's not as reliable as having dedicated FPV goggles. You can see that after I press restart the app now it's working again. By the way if you're having connectivity issues I recommend you to press the play button and then you can select the USB web camera which is the OTD device so if it doesn't work for you press the play button press refresh a couple of times while the OTD device is connected you can just select it press ok and then hopefully it's going to work for you and there you go it crashed again it doesn't happen a lot but it does happen sometimes especially when connecting and disconnecting the OTD device so you can see that it's pretty easy to use and the next device that I'm going to show you how to configure is my Mac computer. In order to connect the Auto Geo 2 to your Mac, just connect a USB to micro USB cable to your computer, then connect the micro USB to the micro USB port of the Auto Geo 2, open QuickTime, go to File, New Movie Recording, and now you can see that it's working over here we can see the frequency and the strength indicator of the right antenna and the left one same as we had on the android device pressing this button is going to increase the channel and pressing down will decrease it if you want to perform a scan just long press it and it will start scanning and you can see the txo5 is now connected and it found the best signal on 5867 if you want to record the video, just press this button. Now the video is recorded. Unfortunately, when using the computer, the received audio from the VTX is not going to be saved and it's only working on Android devices. The last device that I'm going to show you how to configure is the PC. In order to connect the Auto Geo 2, just connect it to your USB port. And the software that I'm going to use is VLC Media Player. It's free to use and it's not going to expire. In order to display the video feed from the Auto Geo 2, just click Media, Open Capture Device, then select in the video device name the USB 2.0 PC camera. In the audio device name, choose None, click Play. And if everything goes well, the Ishin logo is going to appear and you can just simply use the software the same way that I showed you on the Mac computer and you can see that there is a little bit lag and that's because this computer is very slow if you have a faster computer it's going to work better and if you want to record the video just click the record button and it's going to record the video to your computer so this is the end of part one in the next video which will be available in the next few days I'm going to take the Audi Geo 2 and the Audi Geo 1 outdoors and perform a range test to see how this diversity receiver is performing. In order to do so, I mounted this AKK 800mW VTX on my Bugs 3 quadcopter and I tested it on different output settings in order to see what is the maximum range that we can get. The video will be available in the next few days, so stay tuned. I hope this video was informative enough, but if you have any questions about how to connect the Audi Geo 2 to your device feel free to ask it in the comment section below don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and to subscribe if you're not already subscribed and i'll see you soon on my next videos goodbye